Hi there, Michael Burnett, AF7KB, that fast track ham license guy here, with waves, phase, and multipath. In this video, I want to address three issues that all tie together and that are certain to crop up sometime in your ham career. One is the nature of radio waves, another is multipath interference, and the third is phase relationships, and those topics all tie very tightly together. Let's start at a transmitting antenna. We're going to apply some changing voltage to this antenna. If we graph how that voltage is going to change, the graph would look like this wave. The voltage will start off at zero, and then rise to 100% positive, fall back to zero, and then go to 100% negative before coming right back to zero. Now that's called a sine wave. And as you study for your licenses and learn more about electronics, you're going to see these over and over. So let's look at where they come from. Sine waves show up all over nature. Water waves are sine waves, and so are sound waves, and light waves, and radio waves. If you graph the motion of a pendulum, you get a sine wave. If you graph how far above or below the center line a point on a rotating wheel is over time, that's a sine wave too. And if you think you might go for some more advanced ham licenses someday, that, that wheel idea, is a great concept to keep tucked away in your mind somewhere. So the antenna is energized with that sine wave and that knocks the electrons in the antenna around, bouncing them from one energy state to another, and it sends what we call an electromagnetic wave out into space at the speed of light, shown here in very slow motion. That wave has a few components. There's a lump of positive electric charge, followed closely by a lump of negative electric charge. Now, traveling right along with those electric charges are a couple of lumps of magnetic charge, but we don't really use those for much. Mostly, we're interested in the electrical charge, but the wave is called electromagnetic because it has both of those components. Now, those lumps of charge are just that, a field of electric charge. There's no thing that is charged, it's just a charge. There's no matter involved, unless it just happens to get in the way, but the field itself is pure energy. There aren't any electrons shooting out at the speed of light. In fact, that lump of electric charge would be exactly the same in a total vacuum, where there's no matter at all. It's the same sort of energy you've probably felt on a dry day, when you pulled your sweater over your head and felt your hair stand up a little. Except this lump of energy is moving. Now that wave radiates out from around this antenna in all directions, like waves from a pebble dropped in water. But we're going to concentrate on two parts of that wave as they travel to a receiving antenna across town. One part of the wave travels straight from the transmitting antenna to the receiving antenna. The other part leaves the transmitting antenna at a slightly different angle bounces off a brick wall that magically appears, and then continues on to the receiving antenna. Well, they tell us that the shortest path between two points is a straight line, and since all these waves are traveling at exactly the same speed, that means that second lump of charge arrives at the receiving antenna a little later than the first lump. In fact, in this case, it arrives just late enough that the arrival of its positive lump of charge exactly overlaps the arrival of the first lump's negative charge. Now, the technical term for this is the two waves are out of phase. In fact, these two are 180 degrees out of phase. Remember, 
that sine wave represents a circle. So a whole cycle is 360 degrees. And a half of a cycle, which is the difference here, is 180 degrees. Now, if we look at this in graph form, rather than my little cartoon lumps of charge, the voltages at the receiving end look like this. The blue solid line is the first lump, the lump that took the direct route. The second lump is shown by the dotted red line. Now let's think about this point where the red wave hits 100% positive and the blue wave hits 100% negative. Hmm. Well, let me get out the calculator here. 100% positive plus 100% negative equals... Uh-oh. For that moment, there's no signal present at all even though essentially two radio signals are bombarding that point in space, they cancel each other out and there's no signal. And that's multipath interference. And it can happen whenever we receive a signal that's taken more than one path, hence the name, multipath, to our radio, and that second signal is reasonably close in strength to the first signal. The cure if you're on a handheld radio, it's just to move. It often doesn't take much. After all, handhelds are mostly operating on wavelengths of 2 meters or 70 centimeters. And that means as little as 35 centimeters, about a foot of movement, might put you in a better spot. Okay, we'll be adding more videos to the channel, so come on back and visit, or even better, subscribe to the channel. If there's some topic that just isn't clicking for you as you study for your license, whatever grade, drop by FastTrackHam.com and use the contact page to drop us a line about it. We might make you your own special video. 7-3, AF7KB clear.